Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So Donald Trump has plans for some pretty huge changes to Social Security if he is elected once again this November. So we're going to be going over what those changes would mean and what that would mean for you. Plus, Joe Biden is expected to release his budget at some point today, which would raise taxes on large corporations and billionaires and he says is going to lower the deficit by right around $3 trillion over 10 years. So we're going to be going over everything that we can expect to be released today. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm. And also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive $30 from Rakuten. All you have to do is sign up for Rakuten, which I will leave a link in a pinned comment below. Once you sign up for Rakuten, you just have to use one of the links on their site to one of their retail stores, whether that be Walmart, Target, Ulta Beauty, Macy's, or any of the big box stores you see on there. Make a transaction of at least $30, and once you do so, Rakuten will be sending you a check for $30 in return. Okay, so diving right into the first story of today's video, and at some point today, President Joe Biden is expected to be releasing his budget. Now, keep in mind, whatever he releases is not going to suddenly become law. It still needs to pass Congress, which will need to gain support from both Republicans and Democrats. But so these are some of the things that he wants to have happen. So we're going to go ahead and dive into that. Once again, it has not been released. It is going to be released at some point today. So according to The Hill, Biden budget proposal would raise taxes on large corporations, lower deficit over 10 years. So President Biden on Monday will unveil his budget proposal for the coming fiscal year, calling for tax increases for large corporations and for billionaires to pay a minimum 25% tax rate. The president's budget proposal for the 2025 fiscal year would reduce the federal deficit by about $3 trillion over a 10-year period, the White House said, largely by raising taxes on the wealthiest Americans and businesses, the budget would also crack down on corporate profit sharing. A White House official said the budget would cut taxes for millions of low- and middle-income families, and it includes proposals to lower the cost of child care, prescription drugs, housing, and utilities. The, the budget proposal will call for reforms to strengthen Medicare and Social Security, and it will contain several other White House priorities, including funding to combat climate change for small businesses, for national paid leave, and for cancer research. The proposal will, in many ways, echo last year's budget put forward by the White House, which would have also lowered the deficit by about $3 trillion, increased taxes on billionaires, and increased the Medicare tax on individuals making more than $400,000 per year. So Biden and the White House, of course, want to lower the deficit by right around $3 trillion over 10 years. Now, as far as both presidents go, between Joe Biden and Donald Trump and the rematch that we're going to be having in just about eight months from now, actually eight, actually less than eight months from now, uh, if we look at how both presidents performed as far as the deficit goes, right now we're about $34.5 trillion in debt as a country, which is absolutely massive. That's really, really bad. But if we look at Biden and Trump and how both of them did, if you look at the chart up on the screen there, we can see that Trump added about $8 trillion in debt. Now, keep in mind that almost $5 trillion of that was in 2020 during all of the COVID spending. So without COVID taking place, he likely would have added a right around $4 trillion. As far as Biden goes so far, he has added $6.5 trillion. Of course, that is likely to go even higher by the end of his presidency. He's probably likely to be $8 trillion or even more than that. And um, so, you know, both presidents did add to the deficit even more. Biden, you could definitely make an argument that he has definitely added more than Trump has been. There's been a lot more spending. The, the, the debt has gone up. Uh, so once again, it's going to be Biden versus Trump. And we have some pretty big policy differences. And of course, Trump has actually suggested that he's going to be making some huge changes to Social Security if he is elected once again in November of this year. So we're going to be going over what changes he said that he is going to be making. So the first big change that Trump said that he's going to make is to eliminate the payroll tax. So back in 2020, 
before the election took place. He said that if he is reelected once again, if he defeats Joe Biden, if he defeated Joe Biden, he would have completely eliminated the payroll tax. Let's go ahead and watch. And then the payroll tax will be terminating the payroll tax um, after I hopefully get elected. We'll be terminating the payroll tax. So that will mean anywhere from 5,000 to even more per family. And also great for businesses and great for jobs. A lot of people will be very happy to hear that. A lot of the great, certainly conservative economists will be great to have. They think that's the greatest thing we can do. That's better than the payments. That's better than anything else. Uh, but it's a lot of money, and it's, uh, it's going right directly to the people, and it goes there very easily. But it also creates stronger companies to employ the people. So we will be, on the assumption I win, we are going to be terminating the payroll tax after the beginning of the new year. Now, obviously, by removing the payroll tax, basically what the payroll tax is, is whenever you're working, uh, whether you're an employee or whether you're the business owner, if you're the employee, you're going to be paying 6.2% into the Social Security Trust Fund. And whoever your employer is, is going to be matching the other 6.2%. And then you're also going to be paying around 1.4% uh, into Medicare and your employer is also going to match that. So if they completely remove that, they would no longer have that money coming from the employee uh check and the employer would no longer have to match that or if you're a business owner or you're uh, self-employed you would no longer have to pay 12.4 percent into social security so obviously there'd be even more of a shortfall and right now they're saying that by the time of 2033 if nothing is done to the social security trust fund to bring more money into it or make sure that less money leaves it there is going to have to be a cut in benefits by 20 to 25 percent so obviously they would have to make this money up somehow uh, so even though you would be paying less taxes if you're a worker, then that could really put the Social Security Trust Fund into a great deal of jeopardy. But he also said that he wants to fund the Social Security Trust Fund by drilling for more oil. This is something that Saudi Arabia actually does. So according to Newsweek, Trump's plan to help save Social Security involves tapping America's oil supply in a similar way that Saudi Arabia does. He said, quote, it will take care of everything. Saudi Arabia is the largest exporter of petroleum and made over $202 billion in oil exports in 2021, according to the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. Oil revenues help start Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, which is being used to invest in companies and industries outside of oil in the hopes of diversifying the economy. He said, quote, we have more oil and gas than they do. We can be rich again. So that's one of his proposals there. Drill in Alaska to use that money from the extra drilling to throw into the Social Security Trust Fund and help shore up the program in that way. So he wants to cut payroll taxes and also drill for more oil to fund the Social Security Trust Fund. But he's also said that he wants to leave the program unchanged. So whenever he was going up against Nikki Haley, um, he was absolutely destroying Nikki Haley in the polls, but he was kind of bashing her, uh, saying that Nikki Haley wants to re uh, raise the full retirement age. He says, we do not want to raise the full retirement age. We want to leave the program unchanged. He said he doesn't want to do anything with Social Security, as you can see up there on the screen. And, you know, if they don't do anything, if they don't change anything about the program, then obviously by the time 2033 comes around, we are going to have to have those unfortunate cuts of anywhere between 20 to 25 percent. So something does need to happen. Trump will definitely have to come in if he does win his election in 2024 and make some pretty swift changes to ensure that we do not have the cut in benefits by 20 to 25 percent. But let me know in the comment section below, who do you trust more with the future of Social Security and the future of our country? Do you trust Joe Biden more or do you trust Donald Trump more? Let me know in the comment section below. But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it. if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.